I bet you'd be pretty upset if I told you that there's something in our water supply that's been linked to thyroid disorders, lower IQ in children, and may even be contributing to your present fatigue, anxiety, and sleep problems. You might think that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but there's actually some really concerning science-backed data emerging about fluoride, which is the chemical added to most drinking water in the United States. And this really matters to me personally because I treat mental health disorders. I have young children that would be drinking this water. My name is Dr. Cody Rawl. I'm a U.S. Navy trained board certified psychiatrist and I specialize in neurotechnology and brain performance. In this video, we're going to look past the conspiracy theory level noise and focus on the real measurable effects fluoride might be having on your brain. And we'll address the question why for many of us, the risks of fluoride may outweigh any potential benefits. My blood pressure goes up a little bit when people say, oh, you know, you're anti-fluoride. I'm not anti-fluoride, but I just don't get the logic. It you're, doesn't make sense. You're thinking critically about the about it. Like, now, fluoride was originally added to the public drinking water in the United States in the 1940s and 50s after early research showed that it could help reduce the occurrence of cavities, especially in children. Back then, dental hygiene and access to dental care was limited, and adding fluoride to the public water system seemed like a public health win. The practice expanded in the 1960s, and today over 70% of Americans drink fluoridated water. But here's one problem. A lot of those original studies were based on topical application of fluoride to the teeth, like through toothpaste, and not through systemic ingestion of the water. The theory is that if the fluoride's in the water, it's going to touch your teeth and protect it against cavities. But a lot of people right now are becoming more and more skeptical if that's actually having any positive effect. And in the decades since, we've learned that fluoride can actually accumulate in your body, it can accumulate in your bones, it can affect hormone levels, and even disrupt brain function, especially in young developing brains. Which all brings us to one of the most concerning findings in recent years, a 2019 study published in the Journal of American Medical Association Pediatrics a top-tier peer-reviewed medical journal found that higher fluoride levels in the urine of pregnant women was linked to lower IQ scores in their children. And it wasn't just a small difference. It was four to five points, which is a cognitive impact comparable to lead exposure, which is a known neurotoxin. And it certainly wasn't fringe science. It was a prospective study that followed hundreds of mother-child pairs measuring fluoride levels during pregnancy and then tracking the children's development over time. So this is where things go from questionable to deeply concerning because once you understand how fluoride can actually interfere with brain development through thyroid disruption and other effects, the risks start to add up quickly. So one of the main reasons fluoride may be impacting fetal brain development is its interaction with thyroid hormone. Fluoride competes with iodine, which is a critical building block for thyroid hormones like T3 and T4. These hormones are absolutely essential during pregnancy. They guide everything from neuronal migration and synapse formation to the myelination and cortical development of the fetal brain. In other words, if the thyroid hormone is disrupted even slightly, this can really affect brain development. And that's potentially what we're seeing in these new studies. It may be subtle, but they are definitely significant cognitive impairments in children that were exposed to higher levels of fluoride in the womb. But this goes even further because fluoride might not just be affecting kids, the thyroid disruption might be affecting you right now. If you're dealing with low energy, brain fog, lack of motivation, mood dips, or difficulty focusing, the fluoride might be trending you towards hypothyroidism, which is a low amount of thyroid hormone and can potentially cause all these symptoms. And it is a fact that over the last couple of decades, hypothyroidism rates have increased in the US by at least 10% according to data from the CDC. So the question becomes if fluoride can subtly suppress thyroid function and you've been exposed to it every day through tap water, how much of your energy and mental clarity is being drained without you even realizing it? And it doesn't even stop at thyroid hormone. Animal studies have shown that fluoride actually disrupts your brain's chemical balance directly, especially in the ratio of glutamate to GABA neurotransmitters. Glutamate is your brain 
brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter. It stimulates your neurons and keeps your mind alert and engaged. In contrast, GABA is the brake pedal. It's the primary neurotransmitter that will calm you, and it helps with focus, relaxation, and emotional regulation. Now, fluoride has been shown in animal models to increase glutamate activity and decrease GABA signaling, which can create an overexcited nervous system. This kind of imbalance can manifest as increased anxiety, restlessness, poor sleep quality, difficulty concentration, and even irritability or mood swings. And on top of that, fluoride exposure has been linked to increased oxidative stress in the brain, meaning more free radical damage to your neurons and increased rate of aging. That's the same kind of cellular stress that contributes to aging, cognitive decline, and even neurodegenerative diseases over time. So whether it's interfering with your thyroid, altering your brain's neurotransmitter balance, or or subtly accelerating neuronal wear and tear, the question becomes, why are we still putting this in our water? Especially when we know that fluoride works much better when it's applied through toothpaste instead of actually ingesting it through the water. And fluoride might not just interfere with your thyroid or brain chemistry, it also accumulates in your bones by replacing a key mineral called hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is one of the key mineral structures that makes up your teeth and bones, and it's also found in one of the most intriguing areas of the brain, the pineal gland. The pineal gland is located outside of the brain blood barrier, meaning that it's even more vulnerable to exposure from environmental toxins, and it just so happens to be rich in hydroxyapatite crystals, which theoretically makes it really vulnerable for fluoride accumulation. Now, a degree of calcification of the pineal gland is normal as we age, but the question is, how much is fluoride exposure speeding this up? Now, this is where things get a little murky because this is why I avoided talking about fluoride in the past for a while. There's a whole internet culture that claims that fluoride calcifies your pineal gland and blocks what they call your third eye, which prevents you from manifesting your potential through law of attraction principles or achieving spiritual ascension through meditation. Now, the problem is, is that all those spiritual concepts are really hard to prove scientifically. And as a physician and a neurotechnologist, I wasn't going to build an argument against fluoride based on an argument that was speculative. But now with these study results, we're seeing real world data. There are peer reviewed studies showing lower IQ, thyroid suppression, anxiety, and neurological stress associated with fluoride in our water. And these effects are measurable. We need more studies to see that they're repeatable, but prospective studies like that children IQ score or have a lot of weight behind them. So I've definitely changed my stance against fluoride with that constant exposure to it in our water. I just don't think that it's good for you. I don't think that it's doing any benefit to your teeth, especially if you're not eating sugar all the time and you generally go to the dentist and get checkups and take care of your teeth. And now with additional concerns that I have about microplastics in the water, which I'll make another video about, I've made the decision to install a reverse osmosis filtration system in my home. And I think that if you're someone dealing with low energy, poor sleep, or brain fog, this might be something that you want to do for, for yourself as well. I think it's worth pointing out that most other countries have not put fluoride in their water. Now, I still think that fluoride applied through toothpaste can still be beneficial if it's applied topically and not swallowed but I probably will cut fluoride out of my toothpaste as well, to be honest, because I just don't see the benefits outweighing the risk. So definitely install a reverse osmosis filter in your home if you can. And maybe the biggest takeaway from this video is if you are a woman who is getting pregnant or know someone that is, make sure that they're taking their prenatal vitamins and that the prenatal formulation has iodine in it. The iodine will protect them from any thyroid disorders that will affect the fetus. And if you yourself have been feeling worn out and a lot of fatigue, make sure to check your thyroid levels with your doctor. Make sure iodine is in your supplement stack and be sure to follow a healthy diet and exercise regimen. If you wanna learn more about science back protocols that I use to boost energy, mood, and sharpen focus in my clients, take a look at my Primal Edge program. It's designed specifically for high performers that wanna take their brain and body to the next level. And be sure to try to get this fluoride out of your water. I don't think it's good for anybody. I think it'll help potentially increase your energy levels. And who knows, maybe it'll clear up your pineal gland crystallization to allow your third eye to allow you to reach spiritual ascension as well. <laughs> this is Dr. Cody. If you want to see what I found about microplastics in the water, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.